What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Bite Size Security. It's your boy Jimmy, the host, as usual, and I am bringing you another hacking video. And today we are doing Craft 2. As we were doing the list here, as usual, we were doing uh, Craft 1 the last time, then we did Boolean, and then I had a long, 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 long break, and now we're doing Craft 2. Or oh, no, the break came after Craft 1. And yeah, so I'm back with another video. I know I didn't upload one last week because there's just so much going on at the moment. And I will hopefully try and get this one done and then have one more, hopefully, because I am flying on holiday tomorrow. And I'll hopefully try and um, get ready to have another video come for you guys next week. If not, don't lynch me. But then better times are coming so just so you know um back to these this list i believe this will be the last one from this list that i'll do but don't 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 be scared i'm not gonna just not do those but there is a better list there is an updated list apparently and i'll just look into it this one has been updated for the new course and for uh, the more active directory heavier exam for oscp so I'll, I'll i'll start practicing from this one and a lot of the boxes that are here are also in the old list so should be fine one more thing that i wanted to share with you guys but before i do i'll just start the recon already so that can load up while i then share one more thing with you guys so i'll do prep node as usual and that will be p and then craft 2 and you will see on the right there should be um the folder there and then here we'll just go into craft 2 and here's why you will then have the folders that i need i'll do external like that and then i'll do recon and as usual the vpn is already running so i'll take the vpn and uh, no the ip sorry and i'll just do recon like that and then i'll also do scan on the ip and save that as rustscan.txt and then one more thing that i wanted to share is uh very exciting so two weeks ago i had the big pleasure of joining a friend of mine a very close friend of mine tim on his podcast the podcast is called the journey beyond podcast and i will now show you a little extract of that and AI, it's just mind blowing how many things you can do. But what I do with it is quite simple. As a pen tester, you have to look at code rather often. So I, I do not know all coding languages, nor am I a particularly good developer or coder. So I just have it kind of explain the concept to me. What else do I use it for? I'll, oh, I take a lot of notes. And I, everything I'm learning in cybersecurity, in hacking, everything I learn, mm -hmm. I write down. And it, can, and it becomes kind of like a book of my knowledge. Everyone it's your workbook. has to have. Yeah. Exactly. It's a workbook. Yeah. yeah. But what's interesting is that the day will come when I can feed an AI system with that workbook. Mm -hmm. So I can give it all of the knowledge that I've, all, that I've ever acquired. And that will become a great help. You know, so I use ChatGPT to optimize these notes or to like kind of summarize certain concepts. And there you have it, your boy Jimmy on his first podcast. Hopefully I will get to do a part two with Tim soon. But the reason why I share this with you is to just, of course, send you his way. Go share some love, go show him support, go like and share the video, the podcast. And, you know, just make sure the cybersecurity community is heard on his channel. I am sure he will appreciate it a lot. So for that, that was just one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. But then finally, also, as I always do, the Academy continues being absolutely incredible. But I have finished the CPTS course, so I'm now officially eligible. Oh, I'll have to log in now. OK, let me just quickly do this off screen because I am not sharing my email address with you guys. <laughs> but basically I finished the CPTS course and am now uh, eligible to do the exam. That too will come uh, soon enough. Might be, we think you might be a bot. I am not a bot. 
Why is it doing that? Quick, quick little break here, parentheses. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I finished the CPTS course and I'm eligible for um, the exam because you have to do 100% of the course to do the exam. And I can just simply say Hack the Box Academy is just, it continues to be incredible. So I finished this one where you can literally go from almost zero to, uh, I don't want to say hero, but very far and great course. It's it's all I can say. And then now next, next thing is just going through all of them. The soccer will come in time because as we get to a higher level towards red teaming, having SOC knowledge will help. But yeah, first is the Bug Bounty Hunter one, which is through the CPTS already almost done. So I'll just finish that. And then the senior web. And then uh, word on the street is that they are working on a CPTS part two because they are releasing new modules at the moment that hints towards a continuation of CPTS. But anyway, with all of that being done, let's get into craft two so uh the scans are done or at least some scan is scanning is done and i will paste the ip um let me take the ip here and paste it there and then let's open uh yeah let's open there and this I can close what there you go I don't know why it does that but anyway so the rust scan let's take that so I'll take this I'll paste it here and then by now maybe some of the scans should be done at least the quick scan should be finished and so we can immediately see that we have four ports open and that will be port 80 HTTP MSR PC on 135 and 445 uh, being Samba and then this is another MSR PC port I believe and so let's just go and delete this delete that sorry so delete this one this one up to here whoa I didn't want to do that let's delete that again and do prep notes again there you go and then we have it again so I'll paste this again I made a little mistake there I don't know why I deleted all of it but that happens so this is the quick scan and then we have the rust scan and then we go here we'll delete SSH and we can delete like this perfect and so we can go into MSR PC let's make this a bit bigger take the end map let's copy one more paste that here take the ports and say MSR PC and then take Samba paste that there take the ports Samba like this I want the air to be a bit more on me there you go then can you hear this probably like that take this Paste that into here. Good. So usually when we have a port 80, we'll also open burp. Um, but first, let's just go. Yeah, let's just go to the IP. Uh, let's take the IP one more time. Like that. And with craft one, we had to craft a client side attack. And I believe here it will be the same again. So we don't actually need verb. Okay, let's get to this. So 
But let's first take the rest of the port 80 because we'll start with port 80 enumeration. So we'll take all of the enumeration we gathered from port 80. So let's do that first. Uh, we'll take curl. We'll paste it there. We'll take the deer search. Uh, we'll post it here. Nikto. Paste it there. The screenshot we'll take ourselves. Like that. And then we're missing what web. And as usual, we'll look through the functionality. So we have about, we have projects, join us, and an admin login that does not work. So let's take a screenshot of the only functionality we have on the website, which is this upload. So uh, so we are dealing with a static web page that only has one functionality, which is the upload. So what are we going to do? We're going to create, let me go on a new page. We're going to create touch.test text, and we're going to echo hello, or please subscribe to the journey beyond podcast and we're going to pipe that or we'll save that into test.txt and then what we're going to do is we're going to open that file like this and then we go here we press ctrl l we can do that and we'll have the test.txt there let's upload this and we get an error like last time, we have to upload a .odt file. We cannot upload any um, txt file, but have to upload an odt file. So we have two tools. Uh, for this. Last time we used this one, Macro Generator, which will help, which will let you create a, well, calc, you will create a calc file, LibreOffice calc, or write a file and uh, append a macro to it. And this is basically a generator for macros. And then we have um, this one. Uh, this is another tool that will uh, essentially create an ODT file that will force NTLM authentication. And this is, I believe, because last time was macro generator, I believe this time, this is the entry point. Now, this is very easy and it will just work, but I'll show you what actually happens behind, under the hood. So, um, we can upload a malicious, ODT file using the tool bad ODF and easily force um, NTLM authentication. That will help us. Uh, catch or yeah get a ntlm hash using responder let's go ahead and exploit this and so with this i'm going to insert a link an internal link and i'll go showcase craft two exploits and that will then create a link to exploit where um, I can now go ahead and do this. So I'll do Python three 
bad ODF, ODT, sorry, dot pi. Like this. Take a screenshot of this. And this will now create the, oh, right. No, 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 I don't want to do that. So I'll go to craft two and then to exploit, there you go. And then I'll say Python three. Python three, uh, tools, bad, and then bad like this. Nope. Take my IP like this, there you go. And here I'll go back to exploits. And so what this will do is create a bad ODT file here. Now, what this does is essentially there's a CVE that will allow you, there's a vulnerability in uh, these ODT files and I can show you. So it will be client attack, client attack, NTLM, ODT, I should be able to find it like that. NTLM credential theft via malicious ODT. Let's go on this block. And that will be CVE, would it be? Let me check. So yeah, essentially, you create a writer file with LibreOffice Writer, and in there you will insert an OLE object. And this you will do, you will have a, a JPEG basically. And what this will do is you will have an ODT file. So imagine bad ODT. And if you copy bad ODT and you create bad ODT.zip from this ODT file and then unzip that into a directory, let's just call it mal for malicious and then go into it like this. Let me close all this, go into exploits. So let's just go on mal. It will give you all the meta files from this ODT file. And one of them is content.xml. Now here, everything is changed already, but usually this would be like it is explained in the blog. This would be dot dot slash dot dot slash me or whatever the name of your JPEG dot JPEG. And it is now your job to change that to file and then your IP, which is why bad ODT dot pi asked me for my listening IP. And you then change that to this. If you have changed it to that, you then, let's say I am in this file, you change the content of XML, you now zip it again. So you do zip, recursive zip with all of that content, but you first choose the name. So that will be mal.zip and you choose every file in that folder. So you zip that up again, you now have mal.zip and then you would copy mal.zip into mal.odt so that you will now have a successful malicious ODT. If you then, let me, now I've explained it here, so I'm not gonna take big explanation. I'm not gonna make big explanations. I'm just gonna link to it in my notes. But essentially you now have that malicious ODT. If you now do sudo responder, uh, dash v for verbose dash i for interface and then turn zero because that's my interface and you listen and then while you do that you go on the website here and upload uh, that is not what i wanted to do that go into mal and you now have the mal.odt here if you now upload that you will normally get a hash here and your resume has been uh, submitted but we are also aware of macro phishing attempts made previously so that was last time and there you go the the attack worked and we have successfully received a hash so let me take some notes so as explained, 
as explained in this blog and then I'll of course link to it we can upload a malicious .odt file which will allow us to listen using responder and um, get a hash, an NTLM hash. Now, how exactly responder works, poisoning LL, MNR and everything is something that you will learn in the academy. And that is a bit too thorough for me to explain here now. But that the understanding what exactly is happening with responder is very important. So I would recommend you go in the academy and um, which one is it? So in the academy, you have the NTLM relay attacks module, which explains it very thoroughly. And then, of course, you have the CPTS course, which also explains it. But yeah, we have a hash. So let's now continue. So we get this hash. So we do sudo responder dash i tune zero dash v and we get Cracked, but here we can cancel that and do this go up uh, and give me one second. And then, like, let's do that, and so we can now go back and uh, go here into loot hash and vim hash and then paste this hash there and then save that so we can now use hashcat to crack this hash how do we do that we use hashcat dash m I think that is module 5600 and then we use hash the file user share word list rock you why am I doing that in here and not just here there you go and then we'll save it as oh cracked that's essentially always kind of the same and as you do more and more of these boxes it will just go quicker um so yeah we can crack this hash and bam we've cracked it so let's take a screenshot of this and i believe in in craft one but we did this attack as well got a hash but we weren't allowed to crack it we weren't able to crack it and so the way in was not through the cracked hash but through the macro and I guess both Craft 1 and Craft 2 are testing you on your knowledge of crafting these, these client-side attacks, essentially. But yeah, so uh, we successfully cracked the hash. And what do we get? Loot, hash, let's... get these credentials so the cyber geek the cyber geek so these and and get a set of credentials so 
so in loot, we can paste this, like that. What do we do now? So we've uh, we've essentially got a set of credentials. So first we need to verify these. So let's now verify these credentials using SMB. And that we can do by linking back into our second port, which is 445 Samba. So we'll do showcase craft two and then 445 Samba. There you go. And let's go there. And now here, we'll also, let's quickly go back and take these credentials. I just have them there so that it's easily, yeah, easily accessible. And so what we'll do is use NXC, which is net exec, SMB, and then our IP, and then dash u the cyber geek dash p winnie the poo and let's just verify those and there you go we've got a green plus so that means we have valid credentials so let's take this command here and let's take a screenshot like that. We have valid credentials. Valid credentials. So now, what can we do? We can list the shares. So let's do shares. And it, we have a unusual share here, web app and we can read. So let's take that too. Now the thing with NetExec and these permissions is you will have to verify. It's always trust but verify, which we will do. So I'll take a screenshot of this. And what we can also do is just test whether we maybe could remote in right away. So let's do uh, VMI maybe. No. And WinRM. Oh, I doubt it, but yeah, no. Okay, so we cannot remote into the box. We could write this into our notes as well of what we've tried but didn't work. But let's just continue what, with exactly what works because I'm trying to have a, a smooth sailing through the entire box. So having only the notes of what works and going through it and making it quite, quite efficient so the video doesn't last for two hours. Anyway, so we have some shares and we can read web app. So what can we do? Let's do SMB client and let's do dash u, the cyber geek. And then slash slash slash, let's take our, our IP. And actually, let's not do this here. Let's go back and go to Eno. Craft2. Let's go to Eno. We are kind of internal, so let's not do external, but internal. And let's, let's copy, okay, I've got an idea. Let's copy this text of text into like that. Is it here? Let's remove, why am I, there you go. Perfect. Okay, and so here we can do SMB client dash U the cyber geek slash 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 take the ip slash slash and go on this share winnie the pool paste that and we're in ls there you go so let's connect to this share and actually verify our permissions. So this 
looks very interesting for several reasons. So first of all, let's take a screenshot. This looks a lot like the folder of a website root. So we've got index.php and we've got assets of upload.php, which is one of the functions we had on this page, which is upload.php. But let's verify if this is truly that page and kind of grab in index.php for one of these. So let's take, for example, in admin or let's take this and let's uh, get index.php and then cat it and then grab for something that we see on the page and if it finds it there you go we can confirm that this is the web root uh, let's do this a bit bigger and we can confirm that we are except for the name web app but it makes sense i'm just trying to be thorough here we can confirm that we are indeed connected into the web root of the web server there you go so what will we do we'll try and upload a file maybe we can touch something or just put the text test.txt. Let's try and upload that. And that works. Uh, can we upload a file? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So now let's go here and browse to it. Test.txt and see if we indeed can and please subscribe to the journey beyond podcast amazing that works so what's the next obvious choice of what we should do let's upload a reverse shell let's exploit this let's first take a screenshot um, there you go There you go. And we can even browse to that file. Everything is, every, all the conditions are met. Let's exploit this by uploading a reverse shell. So again, we can do an internal link to showcase craft to exploit and bam we're back so here we can say uploading reverse shell and here it was exploiting cve what the there you go and so now we can upload a shell. How we, do we do that? We go on our favorite website, reverse shell, ref shell, take our IP, paste it there, 8443, because we're not being silly with the ports anymore, like we promised. And we'll go to some reverse shells in PVP, PHP, and I like the Ivan Sincek, Sincek. So let me copy this. Screenshot of this first. Uh, let's take some notes. And we can copy this and go here to internal and say touch. This should be an exploit, but touch rev shell dot php. You know what? I'm going to move ref shell back to exploit. There you go. And then here I'm going to have to log out. There you go. And then I can go here to uh, ref shell, paste that all here. There you go. 
And now here in exploit, I'll just connect back to the um, to the share. like that and so let's exploit this there you go we can now let's upload that reverse shell there you go put rev shell.php what port are we listening to listen on 8443 and we can now uh, close this. And what we can do to not make use of the browser anymore, we can, oh no, let's do that. And then let's do curl. And here we can do ref shell.php. And bam, we've got a reverse shell and a reverse connection and an initial foothold uh, let's up upload that reverse shell uh, did we we didn't really take a screenshot of us uploading it to the smb i kind of have to go back and do that so let's go on to a new page here and let's just uh, do this. Take. There you go. Put rev shell the PHP. There you go, just for the screenshot. I can kill this pain. There you go. And then curl it. Connect to, and then curl it. Like that. And that I'll do like this, perfect notes. Be thorough with your notes, be correct. Okay, so we now have a connection back to our target. So here I'll say, I'll call it initial foothold. And this one was recon, I guess. Let's go here. Okay, who are we? Uh, let's enumerate from this initial footholds. Let's go here, another internal link, showcase, craft to internal. And we are Apache. We are not CyberGeek, curious. Enumeration. Who am I? Apache. So, who am I? Dash groups. Nothing too interesting here. Let's just do who am I? All. There you go. And then I can just take a screenshot of this. That's a bit better. So we don't have any particular permissions here. Now, I kind of want to connect to the Cyber Geek. So we can do a lateral movement from Ap Apache to the Cyber Geek. We are 
connected as Apache, but have valid credentials of another user, the cyber geek. So let's get another uh, shell going with that user. But first, before we do that, let's just check our docs a bit. Let's enumerate, let's do some light enumeration. Okay, so let's see what we have in here. Docs, let's go back here. We have, because essentially when you are the web server user, often you find credentials or databases or whatnot or passwords in the web routes, okay? So let's do some light enumeration here. Enumeration, let's continue with the light enumeration. So what do we have in here? We have send mail, PHP, my admin, passwords. We have passwords.txt. Okay, interesting. Let's type passwords.txt. We have a MySQL database. Okay. Um, let's take a screenshot. So PHP my admin will be important, as the notes said. And am I blind? There. Okay. Some lights enumeration within the web root reveals some interesting files and folders. One in particular is passwords.txt with the following content. Um, I believe if you do this and then you write passwords.txt here, it will put that as a header. And you shall see that in a second. Yeah, there you go. That worked. Look, this is now a header. So I will later know that this belongs to passwords. And I can just copy. Oh, this is cool. Anyway, we have PHP my admin a database. We have a database. So let's check if we have a database with stat netstats dot slash or what do you call this again? Anno? Is it Anno? Yes, it is Anno. And yes, indeed, we have a MySQL database. So let's do here we say netstats dash dash yeah there you go and we find a listening database we find a listening database on port 3306 because essentially this note here PHP my admin tells us that we have a MySQL database and then indeed we have port 3306 here. So we could connect through MySQL on the Windows machine or we could try and connect remotely. What I'm going to try and do is do a local port forward for this for these ports using Legolo and I'll show you how to do that and then just connect to the PHP my admin because we do have the folder here php my admin and yeah there you go we should be able to browse to this yeah this looks like it's 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 a web a browsable server i guess so let's forward this port uh, these ports and go to php my admin why am I disconnected? Okay. 
like that. So let's first get that lateral movement going. Oh, actually, let's check one last thing. If there is a flag here already, let's go to users and then Apache, I guess, then desktop type. Oh no, dear. Yes, there is a flag here. Okay. So let's act as if we found that first. Let's see if there is a flag. To be found here as Apache. There is. There you go. I'm not going to cut it as usual. Why is my light going off? There you go. I'm not going to cut this because as usual, I don't. I want you guys to do that yourself. <laughs> I had a mistake before. There you go. There you go. And this I can remove. There you go. Um, okay, so how do we do the lateral move? Uh, let's delete this and we are internal. Let's do the lateral move. Lateral move. So normally we use Ligolo to do a pivot to to use a victim host as a pivot and easily pivot onto different networks. Now, of course, you can use Chisel and all these other tools, so cats and stuff to pivot, but some brilliant minds out of France, I believe, developed Ligolo, and it has kind of become the standard for a lot of people to use. Now, it doesn't take away the a use case for all tools. Don't get too used to using Ligolo and still have the other port forwarding and tunneling tools under your belt. Like I have them here in my notes. So you can, for example, use SOCAT, you can use SSH and DNS and like um, proxy chains and stuff like that. But Ligolo makes a lot of things very easily. And one thing a lot of people don't know is that you can also use Ligolo for a local port forward. And that is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go here and we are in internal. That is okay. And we're going to copy from tools. We're going to copy from Legolo binaries agent.exe into here and we're going to copy the proxy into here. And then we're also going to get from our tools run as. Oh no, that's in useful. I don't know why I, why I um, separate tools and just useful tools. I know I was thinking of a logical reason back when I created this, but it no longer makes that much sense. They could all be in one folder, but hey, it's okay. Run as CS and here as well, I go into executable and I'll copy this file over as well. So now I have these three files here. Let me delete index.php just to remove the clutter. There you go. And then I can go up, go back, go back. And I like to create a folder called temp here. So let me do that. Make dear temp. And then let's also go into PowerShell EP bypass like this. And now let's go into temp. And then let's go back down and do server. So what is the alias server? I can show you that's updog. I like updog a lot more than I like the simple HTTP server by Python. Because in updog, if you browse to it, you can also upload files to that web server. So I'll do the server 8000 and that will be updog port 8000. So let me show you if I go to this, I can upload very easily and it, it just looks nice. But anyway, let's close this. This we don't need either. Let's remove the clutter. 
And here we can do wget http slash slash take IP like this 8000. And then we'll do the agent.exe dash o agent.exe. And then we'll also do uh, run as CS and here as well CS. And we'll close this and then we'll take a screenshot of that. So let's first transfer run as CS to the victim host like this. Okay, having transferred run as CS here, let's go on its website, run as CS. And the command I like to use when I have the credentials is just this one. So the command we are going to use is the following. And then here we'll do the cyber geek. And here we'll do Winnie the pool. It's not Winnie with an H, but with an I like this. And then here we'll put our own IP and we can connect it to 444. That's okay. So like this, because we're in PowerShell, we're going to do this. And then here we're going to listen on 444 and that should work. Uh, the cyber geek is limited. Use the flag combination. Okay. Shows correct. Because I've never seen. I've never seen this error. Okay, well then I guess I will do what it says. Uh, bypass UAC logon type five. Let's do CMD EXE. Oh, I know why. That was stupid. Uh, we have to transfer another file. Uh, let's do PowerShell. EP bypass and transfer netcat, of course. Um, so we are internal Apache run as and netcats to the victim host. So let's do server again. And here we can do copy from tools um, binaries. No. Useful binaries and then netcats. And we'll transfer that to here. And then here we can do another wget and then we'll take netcats. There you go. And then this changes a bit. I didn't pay attention to the actual path, but this should work. There you go, that worked. Okay, so we now have a shell as 
Apache. And Cyber Geek. Okay, perfect. So what do we do now? We transfer, we go into temp and we have the um, agent already there. So let's now, actually I didn't, take a screenshot of this. There you go. Let's go here, like this. And here. Yeah, that will be okay. Perfect. Bit of clutter there, but that's okay. And that worked. So, let's now continue as the cyber geek um, so I'll take this add link internal but first I'll have to create another node here just because otherwise this will not work so here I'll say craft 2 so showcase craft two untiled like this, and that will be the cyber geek. Good, 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 good. So now what we'll do is start the local port forward. Let's go into my notes. Um, let's go into the Golo. Uh, go low, local port forward. Okay, so first things first, we have to add a Ligolo interface. Uh, local port forward. Let's create a local port forward using Ligolo and and I will add the interface. So first, first we have to add the, the Golo interface on our attack host, like so. So we go here and add that. Then we execute proxy self certs. So here, like that. And then this will now quickly become a proxying uh, host, but that's okay. Then we take, we execute the agent. Then we start a proxy on our host and use the agent on the victim. To get a connection, a two-way connection, and that we do like this. So that will be agent.exe. The attack IP will be ours on this standard port. Um, copy. Proxy self set. This will be on our host, and that will be on pivot host. There you go. And this should create a connection back. There you go. Let's take a screenshot of that. Yeah, made in France. And there we go. And so now here we can say session and accept that session. Okay. 
we should then select the session. Let's take a screenshot of that too. And then to do the local port forward, we have to do something that we do not have to do when we do a pivot into different networks, which is adding the route to this host. It just is the way it is. You just have to do that. And so you enter this into, you add a, a route to that IP. So you just do that. Then we, add a route to the following IP. No, to the IP and I will enter it. Or to the network, basically. And once you've done that, let's just close that, you can start the tunnel. And if everything went well, then you can start the tunnel slash ports forward. And if everything went well, we should now be able to browse to this and have craft. There we go. That worked. Here we are now able to browse to craft pseudo internally because essentially this is instead of local host, this is now the local host kind of IP. If you understand how a local pull forward works, then you will understand what I mean. So with this being done, we now have access to all of the internal paths within that. So let's check if the admins work, still not. But what should work is PHP my admin. And indeed it does. Um, we now have access to the internal paths and should be able to browse to php my admin and connect to the my sql database like so okay so what's interesting here is that this is probably running as root. Uh, and where can we see that? Um, well, yeah, so the user is root, but the port and the database is probably also running as root on, yeah, root at localhost. It's probably running as root on the machine. So that means that we should be able to query um, root uh, administrative files or write as an administrator. And so let's check that. Okay, so this database uh, is potentially running as roots. So we should test whether we can write on the system as root. How can we do that? Through SQL queries. Okay, so what can we run as SQL queries? I am not an SQL pro, but I have notes. I'm a note pro. So let's go into my notes. Um, attacking common services, uh, SQL databases, 
and here we should be able to say let's first write a file okay and let me just copy this but this is not correct of course but i'll change it let's add this so we'll say um, this is a test and we'll write this into temp and then testing.txt. Now, if it creates this file inside of our host, um, let's um, oh, we have to listen again on one three eight four four three curl the ref shell and then listen here on port 4445 and go to uh, C temp and then run run as CS one more time uh, let's run CS Port four 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 five. There you go. Just so that we have these two shells again. So let's do PowerShell because I like PowerShell. And let's go into temp. And now let's try to write this file and then verify here if it was created. Let's make this like this go. So we were able to write the file. Well, at least the query was accepted, right? Now, of course, first we have to check whether all the databases are empty, which I didn't do, but I kind of, I think I glimpsed at it and I noticed there wasn't any glaring database here. Test, but there's nothing there. So let's see paste this the query was accepted let's see if it created it ls and testing is there cat testing that worked so and the file was created now what do we need to check let's check if indeed this file was created as admin from the admin user how do we do that? I cackles testing dot text and indeed anti authority system. So what have we now confirmed? We have now confirmed that we have privileged file rights permissions. We probably also have privileged file read. Uh, we could read a file. I could read the root.txt file, I think, because I could read it and then paste that into another file. How would I do that? Let, let me look at my notes. Um, I could do Yeah, the same as I did here. I could select a file to read it. Wait, um, where do I have in my notes how you can read a file? Oh, here, select load file. So this would be if it was on Windows. But essentially we could do select load file. And then here I could do um, users administrator 
uh, desktop and then proof dot text and then I could do into this I believe into temp proof dot text you know what let me just try it and then cover up the results if it works so let's go here show query box select load file users administrator desktop proof dot text into is it out file or dump file because i did see once dump file into out file sql maybe I, into out file writes the selected rows to a file column and line into dump file writes a single row to a file without any formatting without any formatting let me do dump file because i don't want any formatting let's say uh, and let's see if that works okay so the query is accepted um, let's see if we can read proof.text and here now it should say proof.text and i'll cut this now but i'll hide it yes okay <laughs> i can confirm that i have proof.text so this is this is wild that you could do this but i want complete system authority right and so let me clean this all up and um that worked let me be a bit cheeky but we want to get a shell as root. So let's go online and say, I think it's payload all the things. Um, privileged file writes payload. without the github privileged no privileged file rights and then privilege escalation let's see hack tricks file rights um, root file rights in those uh, is it payload all the things It is payload all the things. Okay. Payload all the things. There you go. 
So in here I can look for privileged file rights. There you go. Yeah, internet, internal, all the things. And now let's go to, let's do Diag Hub. No longer be used. Let's go down. So this was the second one. And we have their trigger. Okay, let's try their trigger. Uh, let's get that. Okay, let's try and escalate our privileges. Let's do another add link here like this and then showcase craft to privesk this video is already quite long but that's okay um and then we'll do the cyber geek to roots and so what do we need for this we need to clone let me full screen this Wer trigger. Wer trigger. As the Germans would say. So. Privesk. Clone. Like this. Let's go into that. Let's go into bin. And what do we need to do? We need to copy phone info DLL to Windows system. I'm guessing I have to create a malicious DLL file. So let's do that. Reverse shell, MSF Venom. Actually, inside of my notes, I had is anything different from a DLL to, I believe not. I can just do reverse and then here call it phone info DLL. MSF, let's do MSF Venom malicious DLL. Okay, nothing is different. Metapreter, I don't really want a Metapreter shell. Uh, let's do a stageless. And let's not do 8443, but 1337 because we are late. Phone info dash DLL. Is that what we have to create? Phone info DLL. I I get the feeling that if we do this wrong, then we're going to write into uh, Windows System 32. And I don't know if after doing that, you can delete it because on SQL, I don't believe there is a delete query, at least not that I know of. So let's use this. Um, so let's create this DLL crafts Kovesk. Oh, I was already there. Oh my God. Okay, and now server 8000, W gets Thank you. 
Why did that not work? Am I stupid? Huh. Why? Is that not? Oh, that's not the right IP. Huh. Okay. I use wget so often and I guess it, it just thought of an old an old um, query that I've done in the past maybe I don't know but anyway phone info DLL is there and now I have to transfer the other files so let's go into w air trigger w air <laughs> and do Okay, so what are the files? And this one. Uh, place reports file and where trigger in the same directory. Here, I will listen on listen on one three three seven. And what else do I need to do? I need to place phone DLL into Windows C. So that I will do on here. So I will load the file. Temp. I cannot make a mistake now. Wait, let me just first um, execute W true. Let me let me try this from here to see if my reverse shell that works. It probably won't be as root, but it should work nonetheless. Oh, right, it, it wouldn't because it would wait for the DLL to be. Uh, okay, let me, MSFNM, let me do EXE just to see. Because sometimes they don't work. You'll understand why in a second. Okay. So the MSF Venom and the phone DLL is definitely correct. That's what I wanted to check. So now let's go ahead and do DLL into Okay, I have to give it the name that it will have. .dll. So this is the crucial point.
point. Okay, so that works. Um, I'm not really doing any more notes because I'm nervous. Let's just go here and do uh, here. Let's do cats. C and then windows and then system 32. That will now load loads of file files. But let's see if phone DLL is there. Correct, it isn't. P, 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 H. Phone. Okay, that didn't work. That did not work. Oh, but here it says the file exists. Let's just try execute the Oh, it worked. Yes. It worked. Again, I had an, a, a reaction like last video. I always can get these reactions. Okay, but that's amazing. <laughs> And we are anti-authority. Actually, this screenshot is not good. Let's do this. Who am I? And that worked. Amazing. That worked. We are anti-authority. So we can now go to C, users, 
administrator desktop and here we have proof.txt great box great 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 box i liked it, this one a lot and there we have it this is not supposed to be uh, we had the server geek this is not supposed to be either samba there you go these are the credentials so what did we do we crafted a malicious ODT file like in Craft1, but this time we use bad ODT, bad ODF, which is a tool that lets you uh, generate a writer file, kind of ODT file embedded with an image. And uh, if you then extract that to a zip folder and then, I'm sorry, convert that to a zip folder, extract it, you get the content.xml file. And that one you can manipulate to call back to your machine. If you do that, you can force authentication and get a hash. And this is called CVE 2018-10583. So with that, we can then crack the hash and then we get the credential cybergeek.winnie the poo. We can then verify these credentials on SMB using netexec. And we find that we have a web app share that we can connect to we also see that this is the web root of the website that craft was initially showing us and so we see if we can upload a file because even though netexec says read we must trust and ver but verify and so we can upload and there we go please subscribe to the journey beyond podcast by the way then we can exploit this by uploading a reverse shell which we do so we press a link again and we get here. So we can upload this reverse shell and curl it basically and get a connection back. So after that, we did some enumeration and we saw that there was a password.txt file in the root. And we also saw that there was a MySQL database and PHP my admin was the kind of um, path or where this database was running and we didn't need a password and so what did we do we checked if there was any open ports for a, a database internal ports open for a database and indeed there was port 3306 and so before um doing a port forward for the for these ports we decided to do a, a lateral move to the cyber geek and we did that using run as CS. I still don't know if we actually had to do that, but I just wanted to do it. And so then we continued as CyberGeek and went on to create this port forward using Legolo. And uh, I love Legolo so much, it's a great tool. And by doing that, we were indeed able to browse the local host, so to say, uh, which is that new IP that we routed. And essentially we could have browsed to any internal ports. And we did to PHP my admin, and we get this PHP my admin kind of framework per server that we can browse to. And here we were able to um, create a file with, using an SQL query, and we then verified if that file was created as authority, and indeed it was because the database was running as root on the server. And given that this worked, we then Googled for um, exploits, that uh, exploit file right. And indeed we found one, which was uh, this one. Uh, if you have root file right, you can kind of use this um, exploit. So we did exactly what was written here. We transferred both the files that were in the trigger, which let me, Here, no. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to this link. So inside of that trigger, there was these files that we had to transfer over, and we had to keep phone DLL, a uh, phone in for DLL into uh, system 33. We can only paste a file to there as root, so we had to do it through this portal. But first we had to create a malicious DLL that would connect back 
to our host. How did we do this? By creating the DLL using MSF Venom and loading that into, into DOM file. Um, and not out file, I guess there would, there would have been some formatting. I'm not sure if that would have worked or not, but it worked this way and we created that query. It then sent it there. We couldn't find it, but it was there. And by executing it, we got a reverse shell connection back. And there we go. That was craft two. <coughs> Sorry. That was fun. I will try and edit this as quickly as possible. I uh, upload it and then make one more video ready for uploading maybe next week and i am going on holiday now for three weeks so it is what it is i've earned it more on why i've earned it will come very soon it is almost time but i will news that i'm unbelievably excited for but uh, i cannot yet share but anyway this has been craft 2 it has been your boy jimmy uh, with bite size security as usual likes the video if you like the video subscribe to my channel Keep the love coming. I appreciate you all and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.